The College of Charleston Alumni Association recognizes seven extraordinary individuals who have made significant contributions to their communities, their professions, and to our college. Although from different backgrounds, they share the characteristics of leadership, progressive thinking, uncompromising integrity, and confidence that for many were first nurtured at the college. Together, these exceptional leaders share a passion for education and its power to transform lives. This evening, we honor and celebrate our alumni and friends whose bonds with the College of Charleston have enriched all of us. The members of Alpha Epsilon Delta, the pre-medical society at the College of Charleston, have selected Margaret E. Mormon as the recipient of this year's pre-medical society's Outstanding Service Award in Medicine. The College of Charleston, you could say, was in Margaret's DNA, as both parents attended the college and instilled this tradition in their daughters. Margaret became a biology major at the college and excelled both in and out of the classroom. She was the recipient of the Alumni Medal, given by the Alumni Association to the junior with the highest grade point average. Actively involved in leadership roles in many campus organizations, Margaret was president of Phi Mu Sorority, editor of the Comet Yearbook, and student body secretary. After graduation, Margaret pursued a medical degree from the Medical University of South Carolina in 1973 and completed her residency in pediatrics at Johns Hopkins Hospital. She returned to MUSC to become director of the residency program in pediatrics, as well as medical director of the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit. In 1995, she earned a PhD from the University of Virginia in Religious Studies and Ethics. Margaret's experience with patients and their families at MUSC and at UVA taught her there was more to think about than just the disease. She set out to teach others to understand the suffering and the fear in patients the human things we can understand even if we've never had the illness. Today, Margaret teaches that medicine is as much about providing emotional and spiritual comfort to the patient as it is about treating the illness. In addition to teaching, Margaret directs the bioethics programs in the medical school at UVA and coordinates bioethics internships in clinical areas such as intensive care units, HIV clinics, and cancer centers. She has received numerous teaching awards from MUSC and UVA, and in 1988, the College of Charleston bestowed upon her the degree of Doctor of Letters. She is also a well-known author and nationally renowned speaker. One of Margaret's most popular books, Attending Children, A Doctor's Education, relates stories from her career as a pediatrician and the life lessons learned from her very young patients. Through her roles as doctor, author, mentor and professor, Margaret continues to teach the power of grace to future generations. The School of Business has selected Justin Redford McLean as the 2010 recipient of the Howard F. Rudd Jr. Business Person of the Year Award. A native of Chesterfield, South Carolina, Justin graduated high school at the age of 16 to attend the College of Charleston. He proved to be a strong student majoring in both biology and business administration with a minor in economics. He also studied Asian languages with a dual focus in Mandarin Chinese and Japanese. At the age of 20, Justin entered entrepreneurial business with Japanese semiconductor manufacturer Shinetsu. At age 21, the South and Opportunity called Justin back home to acquire a majority position in a software development company he co-founded with fellow CFC classmate Paul Callender. In 2002, 
Justin subsequently formed Endeavor, which today is a giant in the telecommunications industry. Endeavor employs over 9,000 direct and subcontracted field technicians and is the leading company of its kind in North America. As CEO, Justin's day-to-day -day responsibilities center on leading the company's executive team and staff to assure continued success. Justin credits both his business and science education for helping him prepare for the everyday challenges associated with his position at Endeavor. One such challenge came in the company's first year when its IT department budgeted $360,000 for an annual subscription to calculate the nearest Endeavor technician for each dispatch order. Justin remembered a trigonometry function he learned in Deanna Cavani's calculus class and he combined it with an inexpensive list of postal zip codes plus longitude and latitude coordinates. For a mere $80 in a freshman math class, Endeavor has saved millions as it has grown over the years. While Justin has found success out in the business world, he recognizes the value of his experience at the college and returns often to speak to business classes, especially those of his former professor and current mentor, Howard Rudd. Carol Hannah Whitfield's fairy tale story began at the age of seven when she learned to sew dresses for her Barbie dolls. From that point forward, fashion design was a calling for the Anderson, South Carolina native. After high school, the obvious choice was design school, but Carol Hannah didn't want a piece of paper for something she already knew how to do, so she chose the College of Charleston. Once here, she majored in business with minors in marketing and studio art. She believed the traditional college experience would provide her with the tools she needed for her envisioned success. Just months after graduating from the college, she entered Charleston Fashion Week's Emerging Local Designers Competition, where she created a whimsical and colorful collection of cocktail dresses. Her collection was met with glowing reviews. The experience was also the perfect preparation to audition for Bravo Channel's Project Runway. Through eight months of filming, she worked from 5 a.m. to midnight, she joined Project Runway simply to have some fun and show the world what she could do. The importance of the exposure didn't sink in, however, until August 20th, 2009, when 4.2 million viewers tuned in for the season premiere. As one of the three finalists on that sixth season of the show, she made her mark in the world of fashion design in living rooms across America. Since her Project Runway appearance, Carol Hanna has moved to New York and opened a studio in Manhattan to expand her wedding dress collection. Her contemporary designs reflect the city where it all started, Charleston's unique combination of high society and bohemian coastal feel. Carol Hanna dresses are feminine, soft, whimsical, and eye-catching, a breath of fresh air in the formal wedding gown industry, just like the designer herself. Life for Carol Hanna moves at a frenetic pace. Today, she juggles clients, retailers, purchase orders, marketing strategy, pattern making, press interviews, and travel schedules. But Carol Hanna wouldn't have it any other way because she has truly realized the dream she's had since she was seven years old, designing dresses. Lucy Garrett Beckham came from a family of educators, so it's not entirely surprising that the math major has spent more than 33 years of her life in the same field. As a senior at the college, she conducted her student teaching at Bishop England High School and would return upon graduation to begin her career in education as a math teacher. Her math background would prove vital when Lucy became principal of Wando High School in Mount Pleasant in 1998. Lucy was charged with leading the effort to transform the school, and transform it she would. Her charge included building a new facility as well as assembling a leadership team and a faculty of gifted teachers. Subsequently, she oversaw the creation of programs and activities that would serve to instill students with a belief in their school and their personal development. 
Like working a complicated math problem, Lucy stayed the course with razor-sharp attention to detail and dogged determination to ensure a successful outcome. Her vision was realized in 2004 when Wando High School moved to its new 100-acre campus. Despite being the largest high school in South Carolina with over 3,200 students and 300 staff, Lucy was determined that all students would receive the attention and opportunities they deserve. Today, students select from a range of options including culinary arts, engineering, music, and computer arts. Lucy believes the power of opportunity in education has the ability to affect not just one student, but entire families. Lucy's pragmatic approach of combining student opportunity, new technology, and a passion for education has paid off. Wanda is now considered one of the highest performing high schools in the state, winning national acclaim as a model for educational excellence. Lucy Beckham has been recognized for her commitment and vision in the field of education. Her awards include being named Teacher of the Year, State Administrator of the Year, and most recently, the 2010 National High School Principal of the Year. In December of 2009, Lucy was the commencement speaker for the Graduate School of the College of Charleston and was awarded an honorary doctoral degree. Her example of raising the bar for what is possible in public education and setting high expectations for students and faculty has proven to be a winning formula. Bud Ferrillo has always had a desire to change the world. After serving in Vietnam, Bud enrolled in the College of Charleston and graduated with a degree in political science. While in college, Bud was the assistant director of the Charleston County Youth Development Program, where his passion for social issues, especially those related to education, was ignited. At the 1970 State Democratic Convention, Bud led the floor fight to delete the support of school segregation from the Democratic Party platform. In 1974, Bud moved to Columbia and served as Chief of Staff to the Speaker of the South Carolina House of Representatives. In 1982, he was appointed Deputy Lieutenant Governor of South Carolina, serving in the second administration of Governor Dick Riley. In 1987, Bud founded Ferrillo and Associates Incorporated, a public relations and advertising firm which has represented some of the state's leading businesses and institutions and coordinated numerous state and local public issue referenda and political campaigns. In 2005, Bud Ferrillo produced and directed the documentary Corridor of Shame, The Neglect of South Carolina's Rural Schools. The documentary told the story of impoverished schools along Interstate 95. With a powerful introduction by Pat Conroy, the documentary won six national awards, and the phrase Corridor of Shame is often used to refer to this portion of South Carolina. In 2007, while running for president, then U.S. Senator Barack Obama saw Bud's documentary and asked him to arrange visits to several of these poverty-stricken schools so he could learn firsthand about the conditions in the schools. The Obama administration has taken up the cause of rural education and has provided much needed funds to building new schools in many of these distressed communities. Vietnam veteran, civil rights champion, education advocate, filmmaker, public relations expert, Bud Ferrillo continues to work for his community, state, and country. As a business administration major at the college, Sharon Brock Kingman achieved good grades, was in Chi Omega fraternity, where she chaired its community outreach, and was a KA Rush hostess. After graduation, she joined Bell South in the telecommunications and technology sales and marketing department, moving from Charlotte to Greensboro to Atlanta. While at Bell South in Atlanta, her work in the field of technology during the Gulf War led to her involvement with Atlanta's bid for the 1996 Summer Olympics Games. 
Her resounding success on this formidable project led to an invitation to work on the 2002 Winter Games in Salt Lake City, Utah. Sharon has worked on 13 Winter or Summer Olympic Games, multiple Super Bowls, Breeders' Cup, and most recently was head of IT for the 2010 World Equestrian Games. While living in Atlanta, Sharon chaired the community concerns of Peachtree Presbyterian Church, which commits itself to over 300,000 volunteer hours per year. She was the foreperson on two women's only Habitat for Humanity house bills. Sharon is married to Russ Kingman and is involved with his three grown children, James, Kristen, and Brett, two grandchildren, and is especially proud of their work with serving as guardians to two girls, Samantha, age 15, and Mariah, age nine. It is with these two children that Sharon feels she has made her biggest impact, taking them from an environment of foster care and neglect to now knowing there is a future in anything they choose to explore. Sharon's work ethic and compassion also extends to her alma mater, where she co-chaired her reunion committee and encouraged other members of the classes of 1980 and 81 to endow a scholarship. She also has served as secretary and chair of the nominating committee of the College of Charleston Foundation Board, where she currently serves as its vice chair. The Kingmans have also endowed the Sharon and Russ Kingman Scholarship at the College of Charleston. Absolutely everyone who meets John Ziegler comes away amazed by this 98-year-old patron of the arts. A true Renaissance man, John is an acclaimed author, poet, teacher, and a true lover of the arts. While music is one of his great passions, writing poetry is a labor of love. He is the proud author of two published works of poetry, Alaska and Beyond, published in 1984, and The Edwin Poems, published in 2007. For 20 years, John owned the book basement, formerly located at what is now Nine College Way, where he served and befriended a multitude of patrons. Though a graduate of the Citadel, John is considered part of the College of Charleston family. In much the same way that the book basement was close to the heart of campus, John is an integral part of the college's School of the Arts. He has played a major role in the lives of the school's students and over the years has created 25 funds that support the School of the Arts. His generosity does not end once a student graduates, as John often follows their progress through graduate school and even beyond to their professional careers. John can be seen most Monday evenings in the recital hall of the Albert Simmons Center for the Arts, where he listens to student and faculty performances. The evening always ends with John giving the artists a kind word of encouragement. John Ziegler is an inspiration to all who strive to make a difference in their communities. His giving philosophy is very simple. Every little bit counts. The word philanthropy derives from the Greek word philanthropos, translated as to love people, an apt description of John. He loves to see young artists succeed and follow their dreams. He invests in their futures and asks nothing in return but the opportunity to watch them blossom. Tonight, we have added seven more deserving names to our distinguished list of alumni award recipients. Each has honored the college through his or her life's work. Each has set an example worthy of being emulated. As those who have gone before them, they are role models for all of us, and they illustrate the indelible mark the College of Charleston leaves on those who pass through the gates of Porter's Lodge. <laughs>